Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh. I'm a makeup artist from New York and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on various products and techniques. Today we are going to be doing a BoxyCharm base box unboxing video of March. So this is the March 2020 base box. I already did do the premium subscription box. And like I said, we are going to be doing a single review on each box and then I'm going to be doing a video where I use both of the boxes together to do a full look on my face. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you like this video or not and make sure to hit that thumbs up button for that YouTube algorithm and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed to my channel already and make sure you hit that post notification bell icon so you are notified every single time I drop a brand new video. But yeah, let's get right into it. First, we have the Maraud Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisturizer and this is for the eyes, not for your ass. So you just, what? This deeply quenched the delicate eye area with this nourishing cream, a blend of hyaluronic acid and algae extract seal in moisture, helping to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and restore smoothness. Gentle enough for sensitive skins. Guys, this I have been trying recently. I've been using it for my morning routine. It's very, very silky. I tend to look at a product in two ways, for especially for lotions and anything that's hydrating. If you're putting the product on your skin and it's not melting as soon as you've put it on your skin, the product is either too thick or the formula that they're using for the product is not exactly what your skin is looking for. For example, I have very, very dry skin and this formula with the hyaluronic acid and the sea algae, whatever the fuck they claim that they're putting in this shit, it sinks right into this area of my eyelids and not only because I have very dry skin but because the formulation of this product is also very good. It should seep right into your skin because that's how you know it's really working. If you're putting lotion on your face and you do this and there's still white shit all over your face, it's either A, your lotion sucks or you're using the wrong products for your face. So I definitely recommend you change it up. And by the way, the Mirad does retail for $70. Next, we have the Becca. We have the Becca Ultimate Lip Definer. I've actually never had anything from Becca Cosmetics before. I've heard a lot of good things about their primer as well as their setting powder and their foundation. So nothing against it, but it's not something I usually tend to reach for. The Becca Ultimate Lip Definer retails for $22. And this lip liner is a high impact eight hour long wear lip liner that effortlessly contours and defines the lips with the perfect balance of color and precision. The innovative dual ended liner comes with a built in sharpener and pout perfecting precision tool for effortless application and definition every time. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know I had a fucking sharpener built in. What the hell? What is this? Elementary school with the freaking crayons? Hold the fuck up. Where this shit at? So this is what it looks like. This is the shade Fearless, and it's just like a mauve nude shade right here. And it does bring, oh god, oh yeah, it does bring a sharp, oh, oh yeah, it does bring a sharpener. It does bring the lip definer here as well, and that you just use to smudge around. And if you want to do more of like an ombre look with the lips, you can really use this to give a nice blend in between the center color and the exterior color, which works out very nice. Next, we got tweezers from Chella, and this retails for $20. Fucking hate packaging, bro. I can never open it. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Mad weird. It looks like an eye. It looks like a key. Our slanted tip tweezers feature Chella's signature, a unique no-slip grip coating, and a stainless steel slanted tips per provision hair removal. What? Precision hair removal. I said provision. Uh, just a quick disclaimer. This is a BoxyCharm video. So all the products that come in this box, I do not support to say necessarily. This brand that is coming up, I do not support this brand whatsoever. I do not buy from this brand, nor will I buy from this brand ever. However, the product did come in my BoxyCharm. I will review review it for you guys, but it's probably gonna end up going to somebody else because this is just not a product that I would be happy owning. Next, we have the Kat Von D Precision Brow Precision Pencil. Uh, if any of you know who Kat Von D is, please let me know in the description down below. I don't know who that bitch is, never heard of her, never seen her. 
Don't know what she sounds like. This is what it looks like. It looks exactly like the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. It literally, they just copied it and she put her name on it. It's literally the same size. Look at this. It even has the same exact... Wow, look at that. You're telling me she copied another brand? No way. If you want, you could get this from Anastasia for the same price and a better product as well. But they did send me a black one, which is way too fucking dark because my brows are fucking brown. But thanks, BoxyCharm. <laughs> The Kat Von D Vegan Beauty Signature Brow Precision Pencil does retail for $21. And I'm not going to read the description because we don't care. Next, the last product in the box, something I was hoping I wouldn't get. <laughs> I have too many palettes, as most of you can tell, and from all the videos that I've been doing. But we got the Living and Color Palette from Hank and Henry. I'm actually pretty excited because I've never had a Hank and Henry palette and I've heard lots of good things, especially about their brushes too. But this is what it looks like in the packaging. It's actually really cool packaging. Uh, it gives me like 2004 Avril Lavigne vibes, something like very throwback-ish. And the colors are pretty nice too. Of course, we're gonna do some live swatches like we always do. The Hank and Henry Living in Color Palette retails for $27. That is an amazing price point. I can just say that. Are you ready to start hashtag Living in Color? Visually inspired by the late 90s and early 2000s, MySpace realness, each one of these eyeshadows can be worn by itself and blended out for the artist on the go. I told you it gave me 2004 Avril Lavigne vibes. We have the shades. I cannot read this. We have the shades Sultry Sin. Fosha, Fusha, Fusha, Petty Cock, what, what, Dra Drag Gun Blood, what the fuck are these shade names, Rosalinda, this is all over the place, Boy Toy, Restige, La Canela, and Marina Trench, <laughs> who the hell named these colors, <laughs> all right, interesting color naming story this is what the palette looks like inside a uh, very bluish greenish palette um just like the box looks i mean all the colors that you're seeing in here are pretty much on the palette itself i would say except for maybe like a black but you guys already know how it goes i'm gonna be doing the swatches on my hands right here we don't put primer or anything on my hand no product on my hand whatsoever just disclaimer before the swatches i do on my hand have no significance for the shadows that are being shown a hand swatch is not a good way to test an eyeshadow but is it but it is a good way to show the color payoff quick that is the only reason I do it, but just be mindful that when you do use these, you're gonna be using a brush, so it's gonna perform completely different. So like I usually do, we go in by the rows. We have three rows of three, so we're gonna be doing three swatches at a time. We're gonna start off with Sultry Sun. It's packed really tight in the palette, but it does give a beautiful color payoff. It's like almost a deep burgundy. A deep burgundy maroon color with blue highlights and it's actually really good color payoff for how tight it was pressed on the palette because when I felt it I was like this shit is not gonna give any color right now but it definitely did next we have fuchsia oh that's really nice and that's like almost like a fuchsia dark red metallic if you can tell right there very similar to the other color. And third, we have Petticock, whoever the fuck came up with that name. And this is a teal, oh God, oh God, oh God, that's bad. <laughs> oh God, oh God. <laughs> we have a teal metallic. I did swatch twice. It wasn't the best swatch, it was pretty patchy, but teals are pretty hard to finesse. So I don't blame it at all, but that is the first row of the palette so now we're gonna go into the second row now we are going to go in with the second row of the palette so first we have drag gun blood oh <laughs> drag gun blood dragon blood who made these names they suck i read it like three times i was like drag gun blood what the hell this is the first matte in the palette, and this is a deep dark brown. I don't know why the fuck it's called Dragon Blood, because I don't think Dragon Blood is brown, but I don't think anybody knows what color Dragon Blood is, so touche. Next, we have 
Rosalinda, and this is the part of the palette that becomes Spanish for some reason. We have a second mat, and this is more of a mauve, red, brick red almost, matte shade. This is more like a dragon's blood color. Maybe this is the color they meant to call dragon's blood, and they switched that shit around, but who knows. And then we also have a boy toy, and this is a deep, dark aquamarine blue. Oh god, terrible. Do you see that patchiness? We're gonna do a second swatch. Blues are also very difficult to perfect, especially... <clears throat> is this a vegan brand? Yes, especially vegan blues, because this is a vegan palette. They tend to be very finicky, so you would definitely want to go in with more than one layer. However, it's still very not that good. <laughs> But we're going to be the real testers of that once we go in with it. And now we're going into the last and third row of the palette. First, we have Rustige. This is the color that calls me out the most. It's almost like a burnt orange color. Oh, yeah, that's amazing color. I love that color right there. That's my favorite color. Matte, beautiful, super pigmented. Really nice. Next, we have La Canela. Again, the palette becomes Spanish for no reason whatsoever. And we have a, oh wow, that's nice. Almost like a copper rose gold metallic and that's very, very pigmented. Metallics are the easiest shade to make in a palette, but good that they didn't mess this up because literally I don't think you can mess this shit up. And last but not least, we have Marina Trench. And this is almost like a deep seafoam green with like a gray undertone this is very similar to that shade in the um fancy beauty moroccan spice palette as well as the jeffree star alien palette very very similar the shade almost now that i think about it this is like a dupe for the fancy beauty moroccan spice palette i'm gonna compare that in two seconds right now hold up all right so here's the fancy beauty and the hank and henry palette so is it just me or are they very similar maybe it's just me but they're very similar. But I mean, hey, there you go. If you don't want to pay for this, you have a dupe right there. <laughs> Anyways, that is the full palette swatch. Here's the color story again. Honestly, most of the shades were pretty good, except for when it came to those blues. Again, like I was saying, the vegan blues can be a little difficult sometimes. However, the swatches do not signify what they will perform like on the lids. So just do mind that. We are going to dip into this palette and the Fenty Beauty palette in my video where I put these two boxy charm boxes up against each other. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. For the most part, I'm pretty happy with this Fenty, Fenty, with this boxy charm box. Besides this thing I got, I don't know what the fuck this is. Trash. We don't know her. Everything else was pretty nice. Hope you guys stay tuned for my next review on all this stuff. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure you guys check out Deke of the Podcast, my podcast with my cousin. We talk about different topics every single week, and there's obviously a brand new video every week, so make sure you guys check that out. Link in the description down below. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and everywhere podcasts are available. And now that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Now I'm going to go eat a squirrel. Hey, what is up, you guys? Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh, and I'm a makeup artist from New York, and I'm here to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on various products, techniques, and tips and tricks. Today's video, we're going to be doing another reaction video, uh, like the one I did. So the series is kind of called MUA Reacts. So I got the idea from Robert Welsh, who is a pro makeup artist. So he does the pro MUA Reacts. So I'm doing something a little similar. Today, we're going to be doing Doja Cat's Guide to E-Girl Beauty. So this was posted by Vogue two months ago. So yeah, we're just gonna watch this like the Kylie Jenner one and tell you guys what I think. Uh, you guys really enjoyed the first version I did of this, which is really good because I had a lot of fun filming it. So yeah, I'm just gonna recreate that for you guys. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you guys like this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for that YouTube algorithm and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to my channel and make sure to hit that post notification bell so you are notified every single time I drop a brand new video. But yeah, let's get right into the video. I will be wearing one AirPod so that I could hear everything, but I will try not to stop it as often in this video so it makes everything a little bit more cohesive and quicker. But yeah, let's get into it. Beauty secrets. Doja hey, Cat's Guide it's to Ego Beauty. I'm about to show you a look that I love her necklace I do that says Doja. Often. 
Um, she's so like cute. She looks like a little boy. Girl, like <laughs> sickly look, where I look like I just woke up and <laughs> blew my nose. And I you guys always drag her for her hair. wig, and so, I love it. This, let's do that. Not that I love I'm that you guys drag her, but skincare. I love this wig. It's such a mess. It's great. I do a face wash. Oh, she's and I so use cute. Tatcha. Oh, that nightmare yes, she I'm uses that quality. This, uh, she said Tatcha. Exfoliating powder. My hands are a little wet. Yeah, this is so something kind of we've told Doja she does a lot. She exfoliates All right. OD. Now look like the like, man. She the over thing. exfoliates. I do this like twice a day. <laughs> you got a little something on your face. Off. Then twice she this, exfoliates twice a day. Off. That's way too much. If you exfoliate twice dry. a day, please 